all start the patient on basal insulin as the first choice of insulin in patients with type 2 diabetes. And we often fix the fasting first. That is, we titrate the dose of basal insulin to achieve the fasting sugar in the target range. But we all have that one odd patient who despite controlling the fasting sugar, we are not able to control the HbA1c to the target that we desire. For example, let me show you a CGM picture of one such patient. Now in this patient, we started the patient on basal insulin glargine and we titrated it to achieve the fixed fasting first and achieve the fasting sugar in a reasonable range. However, what you see is that when we saw the patient after a few months, the HbA1c was still high. So we put the patient on a CGM and what we found was that starting from the post-breakfast, the sugars are going quite high. So in such patients, the concept of basal plus insulin really comes to fruition. So when you have a patient on basal insulin and the HbA1c is still high, we are dealing with the postprandial sugar which is inadvertently high. Now in such cases, we have three broad options. One is of course to use oral antidiabetic drugs which have predominant effect on the postprandial sugar. For example, you can use AGIs or short-acting short sulfonylureas or a DPP-4 inhibitor. But often our patients are already on those therapy when we have started the patient on basal insulin. The second option is to switch to a premix insulin. However, the premix insulin is much more complicated to initiate. The third and probably the best option without switching the patient's basal insulin is to switch the patient to what is known as a basal plus therapy. That is, you continue the basal insulin but you add a short-acting insulin before the largest meal of the day or before the first meal of the day. A lot of doctors also ask us that if the patient has multiple large meals or if the patient has consistently high sugar, how do you really manage that? And that is where the concept of the domino effect really comes. So what do you mean by domino effect? Now, what we mean by domino effect is that when you correct one postprandial surge, for the rest of the day, subsequently, the glycemic control improves for the rest of the day. I'll show you an example by showing a CGM of a real-life patient. Now, this is a patient of ours where we started the patient on basal insulin and titrated the patient's basal insulin to achieve the fasting sugar in the target range. And like we discussed, the HbA1c still was imperfect and we still had issues with the post-meal sugar. So, you can clearly see the fasting sugar is actually well controlled, reasonably well controlled, yet the patient did have episodes of post-meal hyperglycemia. So in this patient, we started the patient on a basal plus therapy, that is we added a glulysin before the breakfast, right? So this is where we added the glulysin. So you can see the post-meal surge just before the breakfast, we added the glulysin. Now you can probably see that the patient has consistent meals. So you can see the postprandial surges are equal in all the three times, whether it's post-breakfast, post-lunch or post-dinner. Having said that, we just considered putting the patient on a basal plus therapy with a short-acting insulin just before the breakfast. Now you can see this is the pre and then you can see the post effect. So after the patient was started on a basal plus therapy, you can see now the sugars are completely flat but also the post-meal surges are down without causing any additional hypoglycemia. So typically, this is what we know as, what we call is a domino effect. That is, once you correct one of the major meals, the entire thing flattens down. The post-meal surge is completely flat, flattened down. It improves the overall glycemic control of the patient. And this is what we call it as a domino effect. So, well, the best way of identifying the major meal of the day is to talk to the patient, what is your major meal of the day? And the patients will often come up with an answer that my dinner is the heaviest, probably my lunch is the heaviest. But there'll always be a patient who will come and say that, like the patient we talked earlier, the patient will always come and say that I have consistent, you know, food content in all my meals. So I really cannot identify the major meal of the day. In such cases, and the best approach is to consider starting the basal plus before the first meal of the day. By doing so, what you're doing is, you're correcting the post-lunch or post-breakfast surge, that is whatever the first meal of the day was, and subsequently getting the impact of the domino effect that the, later on the other meal post panel surges also come down. And that is what is the impact of a basal plus therapy. So when you have a patient who has a consistent meal, they are not able to identify the largest meal of the day, 
In such cases, it would be a good idea to start the patient on a basal plus therapy by putting the patient on short-acting insulin before the first meal of the day rather than the later meals.